Invictus by William Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of all the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood dim tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming! Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spiritus mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. From Blossoms by Lee Young Lee. From Blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road where we turned towards signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bins comes nectar at the roadside. Succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all, comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin, but the shade, not only the sugar, but the days. To hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, and then bite into the round jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. From joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom, to impossible blossom, to sweet, impossible blossom. The Tiger by William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare the deadly terror clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile 
his work to see. Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright, in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? American Smooth by Rita Dove. We were dancing. It must have been a foxtrot or a waltz, something romantic but requiring restraint. Rise and fall, precise execution as we moved into the next song without stopping. Two chests heaving above a seven-league stride. Such perfect agony one learns to smile through. Ecstatic mimicry, being in the sine qua non of American smooth. And because I was distracted by the effort of keeping my frame, the leftward lean, head turned just enough to gaze out past your ear and always smiling, smiling, I didn't notice how still you'd become until we had done it for two measures, four, achieved flight, that swift and serene magnificence before the earth remembered who we were and brought us down. Safe in Their Alabaster Chambers by Emily Dickinson. Safe in their alabaster chambers, untouched by morning and untouched by noon, sleep the meek members of the resurrection rafter of satin and roof of stone. Grand go the years in the crescent above them. Worlds scoop their arc and firmaments row. Diadems drop and doges surrender, soundless as dots on a disk of snow. Fairy tale with laryngitis and resignation letter by Joanne Dubrow. You remember the mermaid makes a deal, her tongue evicted from her throat. And moving is a knife cut with every step. This is what escape from water means. Dear colleagues, you write, for weeks I've been typing this letter in the bright kingdom of my imagination. Your body is a ship of pain Pleasure is when you climb the rocks and watch the moonlight touching everywhere you want to go. A silver world called far away. Dear colleagues, you write, this place is a few sentences contained by the cursor's rippling barrier. What happened here is beaks and brackets, the seraph's liquid stroke the old story has witches, a prince in love with the surging silence of women, a knife that turns water red. You write, dear colleagues, now these years are filed within the infinite oceans of bureaucracy. Everything bleaches or fades. In other words, goodbye. Sometimes it's possible to walk, although you've been told in the oyster shell of your heart, there is no soul. Creatures like you must end as a spray of salt, green droplets floating breathless in the air. When You Are Old by William Butler Yeats when you are old and gray and full of sleep, and nodding by the fire, take down this book, and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once, and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace, and loved your beauty with love false or true. But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. Dirge in Woods by George Meredith 
A wind sways the pines, and below not a breath of wild air. Still as the mosses that glow on the flooring and over the lines of the roots here and there. The pine tree drops its dead. They are quiet as under the sea. Overhead, overhead rushes life in a race as the clouds the clouds chase and we go. And we drop like the fruits of the tree. Even we, even so. The Days Gone By by James Whitcomb Riley. Oh, the days gone by, oh, the days gone by. The apples in the orchard and the pathway through the rye. The chirrup of the robin and the whistle of the quail as he piped across the meadows as sweet as any nightingale. When the bloom was on the clover and the blue was in the sky and my happy heart brimmed over in the days gone by. In the days gone by when my naked feet were tripped by the honeysuckle's tangles where the water lilies dipped and the ripples of the river lipped the moss along the brink where the placid-eyed and lazy-footed cattle came to drink, and the tilting snipe stood fearless of the truant's wayward cry, and the splashing of the swimmer in the days gone by. Oh, the days gone by, oh, the days gone by. The music of the laughing lip, the luster of the eye, the childish faith in fairies and Aladdin's magic ring, the simple soul responding, glad belief in everything. When life was like a story, holding neither sob nor sigh, in the golden olden glory of the days gone by. A Song in the Front Yard by Gwendolyn Brooks I've stayed in the front yard all my life. I want a peek at the back. Where it's rough and untended and hungry weed grows, a girl gets sick of a rose. I want to go in the backyard now, and maybe down the alley, to where the charity children play. I want a good time today. They do some wonderful things. They have some wonderful fun. My mother sneers, but I say it's fine how they don't have to go in at quarter to nine. My mother, she tells me that Johnny May will grow up to be a bad woman, that George will be taken to jail sooner or late on account of last winter he sold her back gate. But I say it's fine, honest I do, and I'd like to be a bad woman too and wear the brave stockings of night black lace and strut down the streets with paint on my face. I heard a fly buzz when I died by Emily Dickinson. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes around had wrung them dry and breaths were gathering firm for the last onset when the king be witnessed in the room. I willed my keepsakes, signed away, what portion of me be assignable. Then it was there, interposed, a fly. Blue uncertain stumbling buzz between the light and me. Then windows failed, and then I could not see to see. As a boy, I bicycled the block, with a brown mop top falling into a tail bleach block, gold like, under a golden light like colors of noble knights banging on corners, unconcerned with the colors I wore. A shorty, too small to war with, too brown to be down for the walk. White knights became brown, kings still showing black and gold on corners now proud. The block, a branch branded with locked Roman graffiti on garage doors by the pawns. As a teen, it could have beamed the crown. Walked in without the beat down custom, warred with my cousin who claimed two six set on the next block. Stepped in black and beige, but I prefer games to gangs, books to crooks, wearing hats crooked to left or right, fighting for a plot, block to spot, and mark with blood, of boys who knew no better way to grow up, throw up the crown, and be down for whatever.